So welcome back. Um, the next speaker and the final speaker um, is Miss Adriana Mabilia, a journalist from Brasilia. She has studied how the Brazilian press covered the issue of Palestinian women in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mrs. Mabilia has also traveled to the West Bank to cover stories that are mostly unknown to the Brazilian media. Madam, you have the floor. Microphone, please. Microphone, please, for the speaker. on okay excuse me yeah yeah go go on yeah okay great so uh, I know uh, that uh, journalism is not facing a very proud moment uh, yeah media is a kind of uh, spectacular yeah journal some journalists yeah some journalists think that uh, news um, uh, things for celebrity they they think they are celebrities yeah and uh, we have to review some things in journalism yeah breaking news today is something that uh, can change the world yeah and uh, breaking news is not enough we we need much more but we have uh, a very, very important and responsible professionals and we have to follow them and uh, we have to respect and uh, give them power to speak, to, to say uh, what they are uh, seeing around the world. Specifically about uh, Palestine and the occupation on media, uh, I studied because uh, I made a research because uh, it was uh, clear that uh, Brazilian people didn't know about Palestine, didn't know what uh, happens uh, in Palestine. So I made a research to, to see if my perception was correct. And uh, it was, unfortunately, yeah. I, during my research, I talked to Palestinian people. I asked them how they perceive them on media. And I'm going to read three uh, answers I, I had in my research. I'm going to read for you. The first one. The Brazilian media doesn't report both sides. When Israel attacks, the reason given is always that is a response to violence by Palestinians. When a Palestinian attacks, no reason is given as if they attack because they are terrorists. It was a Palestinian that uh, wrote that for me. Another declaration about it. Whenever there is a Palestinian attack, what the press never says is that it was a natural response to crimes committed by Israel as part of uh, its occupation of Palestine. And the third one. I think Brazilian media and the foreign media as a whole fail to show both sides when talking about the conflict. To give an example, there was the case of a suicide bomber who blew herself up on 4 October. Um, if I recall, the person, the, the Palestinian say, if I recall, what led the woman to commit the attack was the death of her husband at the hands of Israeli soldiers. The newspaper never mentioned that. I would like to see some attempt to show her side of the story. Though, of course, I'm not trying to defend her. Innocent people die on the Palestinian side every single day, many of them women and children. Vic 
victims of Israeli government's policy of extermination, but they doesn't justify retaliating in the same way. Yeah. So uh, these were three uh, answers about uh, uh, how Palestinian people see themselves on media. Yeah. And uh, after the the research, I decided to write a book about it. So I went to Palestine, uh, I talked to people, and I wrote the book. And uh, it's another uh, subject uh, about media that we have to, to study and we have to improve. Um, internet is excellent. We can't live without internet today, yeah? I can't, at least. But uh, internet uh, is making us uh, lazy, and journalists are getting lazy too, yeah? Why are they going to cross the river or to cross the ocean if they can check on internet? Yeah, but it's important to go where people are, where the problems are, to see with our eyes what is uh, happening. Yeah, and uh, uh, about uh, Palestine, uh, it's obvious that uh, it's happening too. Yeah, journalists don't go to Palestine. They go when there is something hard or unusual happening, yeah? And uh, when you cross the checkpoint, you have the contact with the real situation, yeah? You can write, you can retell the story how it is in reality, yeah? Uh, as a journalist and a reporter, uh, I like to talk to people, and uh, of course, when I went to Palestine, I talked to a lot of Palestinians, yeah? And I brought for you things they told me, yeah? Uh, I, I think it's important to listen to them, like to my friend here, yeah? So I'm gonna read uh, another declaration of uh, a Palestinian, a woman. There is not a single Palestinian citizen who doesn't suffer restrictions and disruption because of the, the occupation. The restrictions go away beyond uh, deprived of the right to come and go as you please. We live in confinement. We have no free access to doctors, education, food, water. With every step we try to take, even within what is left of our own territory, we are subjected to humu uh, humiliation. Another person. It's interesting. It touched me a lot. You can try to avoid it all you want, but the occupation comes to you and forces you to engage in some form of resistance, just to survive. It pursues you in the street, at the university, at work, at home, yeah? And um, why? Am I reading this? Because uh, uh, when you read uh, on the news, when you listen to the news, uh, they, are, they don't give you these uh, human details. They use uh, terms that are so used that we, we, they, they don't touch us anymore. For instance, I have here, yeah? Uh, Talking about Palestinians and Israelis is not only a region in conflict of a never-ending war between Islamists and Jews, of the supposed clash of civilizations, or any of other tags or labels that claim to inform but hide what is already a complex political, economical, economic, and social situation. So um, sometimes the journalists use terms that are, are so used that uh, they don't inform anymore. 
Yeah. Instead of, we, we have to go to the place where things are happening. It's important. And um, I think it's not um, just our fault. I'm sure that uh, at least some of you prefer to meet the devil than a journalist. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we are not dangerous, yeah. <laughs> Lawyers too, yeah. Okay. But uh, we have to think that the journalism is part of our society, yeah? Uh, it has to work to inform, in, to improve our society, yeah? We are not uh, enemies. We are part of the society, yeah? Okay? Um, so I have talked about it, and uh, I'd like to tell you, uh, to talk to you about wh what I, I saw on the ground, yeah, because it was interesting. Yeah, uh, wh when I went to Palestine for the first time, things were so different from I used to listen. They were so uh, worse than news could uh, express. Yeah. So, Palestine. Wh when you talk to Pal on the street, yeah, common Palestinians, yeah, I talk to people at the uh, market on the street, uh, yeah, common people. When you talk to them, uh, their speech is too similar, because they are close, they are together, they are living the same problems. So I'm going to read something here that I heard from one Palestinian, but it's common uh, to all of them. They, uh, they complain. They can't resist. Yeah. They say that uh, Israel imposes, but uh, Israel doesn't permit uh, they resist. I've always believed in resisting the occupation from a pacifist way. Fighting it with arms will not bring us freedom, only hurt, this and further problems. But resistance was already ingrained in us because we'd lived under occupation and army repression practically since birth. I've also been arrested, the, the woman, yeah? I've also been arrested because the arm knew I gave consciousness raising lectures against the occupation. Israel consider, considers this is a crime of conspiracy. They want to invade our territory, but won't allow resistance, not even peaceful resistance, yeah? And we, when we talk about resistance, there are, there are at least three things that we know better about uh, Palestine. We heard more. The wall, the checkpoints, and the colonies, the settlements, yeah? And about the wall. Uh, w when I was there, I went to a, um, how do we say, uh, demonstration, no, yeah, about a demonstration on Fridays, they happen on Fridays, and uh, a person who was uh, coming with us said, they place, they are the soldiers. They place themselves along the road to try and frighten people, to intimidate them. Sometimes they act from a distance. It, it's just a psychological pressure. But they, can't be, they can be violent too. They block our passage, use tear gas, fire, rubber bullets, arrest demonstrators. They alternate their tactics, sometimes repressing us with force, sometimes without. They do it that way 
to spread confusion in our minds so that even when they are not being violent, we are tense, knowing they might turn at any moment. And uh, even about the walls, what do Palestinians say? That the soldiers do not ask, do not ask permission to get into their houses to construct the wall or to destroy their houses to construct the wall. Yeah, they simply get into and go on. And uh, a minute. When you walk through the, the occupied territories, you, su you see whenever, wherever you are, the situation. Yeah? The walls uh, go through gardens, they cut the electricity, they are in the middle of uh, streets, yeah, one line to one side and the other line to the other side, yeah. So, if a journalist go there and see, he's gonna have uh, an, another view of what he's gonna write or say. It's important to go there and to see. And um, everybody here talked about uh, being with the power to fight uh, or being tired. I've heard uh, a lot of uh, speeches about it. I, I want to read another uh, for you. Despite of the restrictions, the lack of jobs, the precarious health system, and all the shortages Israel imposes on us, more than 4 million Palestinians resist and remain in the occupied territories, some through lack of choice, but the majority because they believe in the justice of the Palestinian cause. The strength and love of the land are passed from one generation to the next. My parents, then my husband and me, and now my children, three generations who have suffered from the occupation, and we carry on resisting, always peacefully. One day it will be over. No empire doesn't eventually crumble. History shows us that. It gives us the strength to keep moving forward. But I have another speech that is almost the opposite. A, a person who is tired of fighting. The same situation. In this place, you hear the same story, the, the, the woman was telling me. In this place, you hear the same stories over and over. I'm 37, <coughs> they are 80. My oldest son is 17. We all tell you of more or less the same experiences. Since our territory was occupied 60 years ago, we all hurt in the same way. Suffering has been passed from parent to child. Very little has changed. There is another one here. I was born under these conditions. I've known no other way of life, but I can't guarantee, I mean, but I can guarantee you that no human being adjusts to confinement, even when born into it. 
So when you talk to Palestinians on the ground, you are going to listen to both sides. There are those who are pretty, pretty tired of that. And there are those who are fighting and uh, who have power to fight. But they are exhausted. They are really exhausted. And um, as a journalist, my question is, what can explain the apathy of the international community if not the military and economic power of the United States and Israel? Yes. I thank uh, Mrs. Mabila for her presentation and for eloquently underlining the vital role the media plays in our societies and the challenges it faces. She has reminded us of the importance of accurate media coverage and reporting, as well as the positive impact the media can have in shaping public opinion. As we all know, Brazil was the first Latin American country to recognize the state of Palestine, and we commend the work of Brazilian activists who helped the country towards that historic decision.